Praise the Lord, everyone. Today I want us to take a look at this picture I pulled from a video that I've seen online. There are a few things here that are out of order and that should not be, and I want to discuss those with you so that we may be edified and have understanding before it's too late. I want to entitle this teaching, this examination today, What's Wrong Here? There are plenty of things that are wrong in this picture, and I want to go over a few of them with you. Firstly, I highlighted this woman. I repeat, I highlighted this woman because she does not belong here. She needs to be cut out, maybe placed on this front row or up top here, but she does not belong on this raised platform behind this contemporary pulpit, mic in hand, preaching a sermon to the so-called congregation. And she is out of order. She is out of place. She is out of line. She is in violation of the code and conduct of the Word of God. The Bible states in 1 Corinthians 14, Let your women keep silence in the churches, plural, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded, commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. By being a speaker, woman, in the churches, is to be a disobedient woman. Speaking is to give a word to the church through sermon, through teaching. Being a speaker. The Bible says she is not to be a speaker. She's not permitted, but she is to keep silence in the churches. What we have seen is a woman putting herself in a position of a speaker in that picture, speaking a message to the congregation through preaching through exhortation, which is not to be permitted. It's a violation. Another thing here we see uh, men in the assembly. Even though she's out of line, we can still mention that the men are here in violation of being under a woman speaker. If these men would study their Bibles and read the Word of God and believe God, then they'd know not to sit there while this woman is so-called preaching or teaching, which makes them in violation as well. People perish for a lack of knowledge. The Bible states, 1 Timothy 2, 11 and 12, Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not, 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 a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Now this scripture here is disregarded by the majority of churches in our time. Many of the churches have disregarded this scripture and they have misinterpreted it falsely interpret it, and speak lies on it. I've heard many, many sort of theories on what Paul was uh, referring to when he stated this to Timothy, and all the theories were incorrect. They were wrong. They were not sound. This is the only way we see a woman teaching in Titus 2. The aged women likewise, women, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, the women are to be teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women, teach the young women, young women, not young men, young women, not old men, not middle-aged men, the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, discreet, uh, that's contrary to what we see the attire of the woman standing on that platform. It's totally contrary, but we'll get into that later. Discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. And that is what's taking place. When these women erect themselves to these positions of pastor, bishops, public speakers in the congregation, they have essentially disregarded the Word of God, wrongly interpreted the Word of God, 
and they caused the word of God to be blasphemed. We must understand that these scriptures are not given simply by mere man. Man was inspired by the Holy Ghost of God to write down what he heard from the Spirit of God. So when man takes the words of God and literally throws them aside and, do, and does things his own way, he's in violation. Man is going to suffer heavily. Not only those who are women who are public speakers, out of order public speakers, but to the men who condone it and who allow it in their churches, they're going to suffer a major penalty. Another thing we see here is a lack of reverence towards the supposed house of God. We have a woman here with the tank top on showing bare shoulders. We have a young man here who just who's on his way to the beach apparently. We have the woman or man, whatever it is, wearing Birkenstocks, someone wearing holy jeans, literally holy jeans, another young man with shorts. There's just a total lack of reverence towards their neighbor, towards the house of God, towards the things of God. Uh, when one comes to the assembly to fellowship, one would want to cover up and dress a, a little bit more appropriate to the environment and not just dress like if they came from the college campus or they're wearing scrubs or they're just you know on their way to uh, go to the park. You see a lack of reverence here. And it starts from up top. If the up top is not revering God in, in uh, their conversation, in their dress, then how can the congregation do so? The congregation mainly will only go as high as the leadership, usually. So the leadership plays a, an important role, an example, demonstrating uh, a lifestyle that follows Christ, not only in word, but also in deed. The Bible says in 1 Peter, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, all manner, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Okay, this is not speaking about cut up jeans, as we've seen the woman wearing. This is a consecrated individual, set apart, a sanctified individual, one who is striving for holiness in all manner of conversation, whether it be our behavior or our outward adorning, it ought to be that which becometh holiness, not in fashioning ourselves according to our former lusts, not in portraying an image that is similar or on par with the world or the worldly system or the worldly fads, but that is what we see in these contemporary churches. The women wearing yoga pants, the men wearing skinny jeans on the platform in leadership. They disregard the word of God and it's going to be to their own destruction. I point the arrow at her head for a reason. Now let's just say that she was only praying for the people or let's say she was given a word of prophecy unto the people, which I know she's not because I, I know from watching the video she's getting, giving a sermon, a teaching to the people. But let's just imagine that she's only praying or prophesying. What should she have on her head? 1 Corinthians 11 states, But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Prophesy means to foretell, tell forth future events to come. That is prophesying. Uh, she was not prophesying, she was preaching. Uh, to prophesy is to cover your head as a woman to give or foretell the word of a future event to come or to the people and to sit back down. It's not to get behind a pulpit and start preaching or even get behind a pulpit to cover your head and start preaching. That is not what prophesying is. Prophesying is to foretell, to tell forth a future event to come. This is an example of a 
a veil or a covering. Not a burqa. This is a proper veil or a head covering. Another example of a head covering. We do not see that here. She does not have anything covering her head. And like I said, it's already a violation, a code of uh, conduct violation, because she shouldn't be up here in the first place. Another thing here, if you'll notice, you can hardly see it, but she is wearing what women uh, call eye cover, makeup on her face. Let's see what the Bible says about this. In Second Kings 9.30, And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tired her head and looked out at a window. So what did she do to prepare herself for the coming of uh, Jehu? She painted her face. Jezebel painted her face. She literally took out makeup and painted her face. Jeremiah states, And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee, they will seek thy life. So we see here a negative look on face painting. Nothing positive that we see here regarding face painting. These are negative things. Proverbs 6.25 states, Lust not after her beauty in thy heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. So this is a, a reference to seduction, the eyelids. And usually what women have that are in the world have on their eyelids is uh, what they call eye cover, eye shadow actually. They cover their eyes to seduce, to spark attention. They deck their face. And what I see here is something similar to a club goer. I didn't go to too many clubs, but I went to parties when I was a sinner. And this is what we've seen at parties. We've seen the women with the high heels and the tight jeans or pants. Back in those days, it was jeans. But now it's yoga pants, leggings, or what do they call these leotards or pantyhose or underwear. It's quite the norm now. Blouse and open jacket. I mean, this is just seduction. Enticing the flesh. This is club goer attire. But this is permissible in these contemporary churches. The women wearing yoga pants and high heels, the men wearing tight skinny jeans and high heels and blouses, similar to that of a woman blouse. The men wear uh, t shirts that look like women blouses and they wear high heel uh, boots that look like high heel women's shoes. And now let's take a look at the bottom attire. We see here that she's wearing these tight, I guess they're yoga pants. That's as best as I can call them. I don't know too much about this, but they're yoga pants. I know these are high heels. And she's supposed to be a leader in this church in front of young people and a congregation of people. And this is in total violation of the word of God. First Timothy states, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Notice, in like manner also. What is this referring to? Well, just read a little bit prior to that. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands, notice, without wrath and doubting, in like manner also, without wrath and doubting, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Now, when women hear about, the natural woman hears about modesty, initially she has anger in her heart. And she begins to doubt. She begins to get mad at the preacher or the teacher, when he speaks on modesty, if she's not submissive to the word of God, she'll get mad. There are some women who will submit and they'll conform to the word of God and they will not have wrath. Uh, Paul tells Timothy 
that they should not have wrath and doubt, but they should just be submissive to the word of God, to the teaching, to the doctrines of the apostles. So we're not to have wrath. And then they begin to doubt and say, well, no, that was just first century. We're in the 21st century now. Things have changed. We don't live like that anymore. We don't dress like that anymore. Paul was just speaking to his environment because the women were asserting themselves. No, that is not what Paul was stating. He wasn't saying this is this has a, a an expiration date. This word here to you, Timothy, has an expiration date on it. No. They begin to doubt and say, well, Paul was a uh, you know, chauvinist, male chauvinist, and he was uh, a homophobic, and he, he just didn't like women. He was anti-woman. Doubting. Doubting the very word of God. So Paul tells us right off the bat, without wrath and doubting, men lift up holy hands when you pray, and women, without wrath and doubting, likewise, adorn yourself in modest apparel. And these are acts of submission. For men to lift their hands in prayer, that's an act of submission. For women to adorn themselves in modest apparel is an act of submission. This is what becometh a Christian. Proverbs 31 states, Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time and time to come. Notice, strength and honor are her clothing. Is this strength and honor? No, this is easiness. This appeals to the flesh. This is seductive attire. This is easy attire. This is the attire that says, I'm ready, I'm open, let's talk, let's hang out. There's no strength here. There's no honor here to dress uh, similar to that of Jezebel in flaunting attire, decking oneself out, painting one's face. Now, I understand a new convert. They're coming from a worldly uh, system that promotes this sort of attire. And, and there's a time period for the new convert, the babe in Christ, to settle into the kingdom of God and understand the ways of the Lord. And we have, we have mercy and, and we give them grace. But for a, an aged Christian or for a person who's been in the faith for quite some time, if they're still dressing like the world, there's a problem. There is a major problem. Now this is an example of modest apparel. These young ladies are dressing modestly. Now think about it. Take these three young ladies, put them into an environment like this, and what are they to think? What sort of example is this woman, who's supposed to be a pastor or teacher or preacher, a woman in leadership, what sort of example is she setting for those three young, modest, dressing young ladies? She's confusing them. She's leading them in the wrong direction. And for the leadership of this so-called church to allow this is shocking. This is an example of modest apparel. Their apparel which covers up, which is discreet. Praise the Lord. Now I remember a time when we had a clear distinction between the two genders. And these signs were above our bathroom doors. Men go to that restroom Women go to that restroom. Women had skirts on. I mean, it's pretty obvious in nature that women wore the attire of a woman, men wore the attire of a man. But we've come to a time in our lives and in our era where there is no distinction. They don't want to have a distinction any longer. And I prophesied about this a few years ago in one of my videos entitled Why Christians Shouldn't Go to Starbucks. At the time, I said that sooner or later, in a few years, the majority of our retail businesses and schools and uh, restaurants will have gender-neutral restrooms. At the time, it was only Target, and people were making a big ruckus over that, saying they weren't going to shop there any longer. But I said, no, listen, in a few years, this is going to be the majority of restrooms. It's going to be gender-neutral. And, and lo and behold, in our time today, majority of our restrooms and places of business, and restaurant and schools, it's gender neutral. The restrooms are open to all. This is how a woman should eventually come to dress, in modesty, covering oneself up. I've heard plenty of uh, testimonies from my wife who dresses modestly uh, that there is strength and honor 
in her clothing when she's out in public. Uh, there's a camaraderie between other sisters who are dressing modestly. And, and there's a fellowship. And there's strength there. There's honor there. And she brings testimonies back to me, and I, and I praise God for it. And also, it does uh, tend to rile up the demons. Demons are manifest. Those who are under the Jezebel spirit strongly, the women who have the Jezebel spirit strongly, and some effeminate men as well, uh, they will see the strength and honor in her attire, and they will get riled up. The demons will manifest. And the, and the testimony comes back. I've heard testimonies, and it's just amazing what the attire can do, how strength and attire are in her clothing, and how it does make a difference. But there is no strength and honor here. There is no modesty here. This goes along with the world. This conforms with the world. There is no distinction. There is no setting apart. There is no consecration in this manner of attire. And I do not say these things to demean this person or slander this person. As I told you, I, I have not stated her name. And even if any of you know her name, we are not to slander her. We, we ought to pray for her that she would repent and, 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 and be conformed to the image of Christ. And then she'll begin to be obedient to the commands of the Lord and remove herself from that imaginary artificial position and dress modestly and be obedient to the word of God. Amen. That's, that is our prayer for her. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, in our times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, Paul was a male chauvinist. He was anti-woman. He was homophobic. Doctrines of devils. They have departed from the faith and they have given heed to seducing spirits in these contemporary churches where the women wear yoga pants and high heels and the men wear tight skinny jeans and high heel boots and earrings and, and fashionable haircuts shaving off the sides of the heads, mohawks. Well, we can take this further. But it's all giving heed to seducing spirits. The demons are out. And they know they only have a short time to deceive many and to get them to drop down their guard, the breastplate of righteousness, the loins girt about with truth, the sword of the spirit. And if they can get them to uh, submit their armor, then they're open prey. The, uh, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that is what he's doing in many of these churches. And they don't even know it. They're blinded. They think this is the norm. Well, I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. May you go in peace in Jesus' name.